So, one of the biggest appeals for me of the idea of becoming a programmer was to have the ability to work remotely and to essentially work from wherever I want. And that is especially true now that I'm essentially an independent software engineer working on my own startup rather than working for a company. Because it means that literally at any time, I can simply take my laptop and go anywhere I want in the world and continue my work uninterrupted. But there's a problem. Because the setup that I have at home with this massive monitor, this hugely heavy keyboard and all of these bells and whistles and this and that that I have with me at home aren't really that great for travel. But given what I do and if you are someone who wants to work remote and who wants to keep programming while you travel, you need to have a travel setup. For that reason, in this video, I'm going to be sharing you what goes into my programmer everyday carry backpack that I take with me when I work from coffee shops to work while I travel or just whenever I'm going back home to Finland or whatever really. There's a lot to be said about having a setup that you actually enjoy working in and that's ergonomic that actually makes you want to start working. So that is why there's certain items that I always carry with me as a programmer. So this video will hopefully give you some inspiration as to items that you might want to add to your programmer every day carry. So let's get started. First of all, we have obviously the backpack. This is nothing special really and you don't need like an insane backpack. This is from Jack Wolfskin. I believe I just bought it from Finland from somewhere. The whole point of this carry is that I don't want to take a lot of stuff with me, just the essentials. So all I really need is one compartment for most of my stuff, uh, a laptop compartment, and we'll talk about later which laptop I use and everything like that. And I like the fact that this has cushion in the backside to make sure that my laptop is staying safe because my laptop is pretty expensive and I don't want to break it. As a programmer, as long as you have these three compartments, that is really good enough. So we're gonna put that there and I'm gonna show you exactly how I would start filling this up if I was traveling. In fact, just next week, I'm going to be going on a trip to Qatar. So I'm just gonna show you exactly how I would pack all the essentials. So the keyboard that I normally use is this one from IT Unix. And I absolutely love this one. It's super sturdy, feels really great. It's mechanical, has this super, sexy noise, but it's quite heavy. And when you're traveling, you don't wanna have your keyboard take like three kilos of the seven that you're allowed in a backpack or something. So this one is great. There's an affiliate link down below if you wanna check it out. You've probably seen it in some of my videos, but when I'm traveling, I'm not taking this one. Instead, I take this one, which is the Apple Magic Keyboard. Whoa. God damn it. I ended up getting this specifically for travel purposes because I heard about the portability and like definitely this is the one that I always take with me. It's super lightweight. Like this is like literally so light. It looks really nice on your desk and that's one thing that I really love is minimalist design and that's why you'll see a lot of Apple items. If I type for an entire day, it does start to hurt on my fingers, but just for short typing and specifically for typing quickly, I really like this one. So this would usually just go straight into the small compartment right there. By the way, let me know if you want to see reviews of the Apple keyboard or my main keyboard, or if you want to see comparisons of these. I don't know if these are the kinds of videos you'd like to see, but if you do, do let me know down in the comments because I do have experience from a lot of different keyboards and I certainly have a lot of thoughts about them as well. Next we have this thing, which is basically storage. Like my laptop, when I bought it, it comes with one terabyte of storage, but I find that long-term, especially for a lot of my YouTube video projects, that is not enough and it keeps filling up. So I have bought more storage and in fact, even this one is starting to fill up now. But the way I've built this is pretty interesting. You can buy these external SSDs from Amazon, but if you want to get one for literally half the cost, you can buy this one that I'm gonna put on the screen that is meant for essentially desktop computers. And then you can buy this accessory to then be able to connect this SSD into your laptop as well. So this is like basically a DIY, DIY portable SSD, which you can get for like literally half the price compared to what you would pay normally. I got this idea from this video by Creative Tech. They make like a bunch of cool videos about Apple stuff. So if you are looking for more storage for your computer, I highly recommend you check this out. And yeah, I'm gonna leave both the links to this in the description down below. This one also goes straight into the small compartment right there. Next, we have some chargers, mainly my laptop charger. Just yeah, a regular laptop charger. 
Um, not much to say about that, go straight to the front. Then we have mouse stuff. First of all, my regular mouse, which is the MX Master MS2. I can't remember the name, I'll put it on the screen. I can't be bothered to check in. It's very, very ergonomic. It fits so well into my hand. I've switched keyboards multiple times, but ever since I got this, I have not changed mouse one time and I don't plan to change. Also take this mouse mat, which is pretty ugly, to be honest. It's like some weird gaming mat that I got from my brother or something. I might just buy a new one actually because I don't think it really fits my aesthetic that well. But for now, that's what I have. Uh, this would go in here. And if I'm feeling super extra, I might even take this Apple trackpad with me. I promise I'm not an Apple fanboy or anything. It's quite overpriced for what you get. And like, it's not that useful at the end of the day, but often when I'm editing videos and I want to like scrub through the timeline, this is really helpful for me. Sometimes I take this, sometimes I don't. But when I do, it goes straight into the front compartment. Next up, we have something really interesting which is this Moft laptop sleeve slash laptop stand. And this one is a total game changer for whenever I travel. This is essentially this origami designed laptop sleeve that also doubles as a laptop stand. So I can have my laptop that fits in just like that. I can carry it in there and place it inside of my backpack. And when I am working, let's say I'm on a plane or I'm on a coffee shop or hotel room or whatever, I can just take this out. I can make this into a laptop stand. And it has two different modes. So here's this higher mode, which I'm using right now, or I can simply do that and use the lower mode. So it's really multifunctional. And what I really love is the minimalist design. And the other thing is it's like, these feel very premium. The exterior of this is made of water resistant vegan leather, whereas the interior is lined with this really soft microfiber material to give a really nice cushion to whatever is inside of it. And when I travel, I also double this with the Moft phone stand. I can have my phone in front of me like this, which simply connects with a magnet. You can also get the phone stand with this really sleek power bank, which allows you to use the phone and have it charging at the same time. And it also simply attaches with a magnet like this. So having these products is a massive game changer for my travel setup. And yes, they sponsored this video and I do get a kit bag if you buy using one of my links below. But this is exactly the kind of things that really fits in well with my travel setup. So if you would like to add this to your setup, the links are gonna be down below. This right here would simply go to the front compartment. I would put the laptop inside just like this and fit it in to the back pocket of my backpack. And so then talking about the laptop, it is the super expensive M1 Max MacBook Pro. I haven't upgraded the M2 versions because I just don't feel the need to. This is everything I want. Mostly I need the power of this for my video editing and stuff, but also for programming. It's just nice when there's no lag, things never crash, anything like that. But yeah, love this laptop. I have the, I think it's the Ali Abdal uh, case on it. I really love the look of. It's the same case that I have on my phone. So yeah, let's put that inside of the Moft laptop sleeve link below. And let's put it inside of the travel backpack. We have the iPad. Mainly I use my iPad for basically watching YouTube videos and things like this. Whenever I'm relaxing, I just wanna lay in my bed on the sofa. I just take this. I don't really use this for much else. I use it for some note taking and I use it for some sections of my course where I am use the Apple Pencil, which is another item that I have to like visualize some things about how computer memory works and programming, which you can find in my course, Python Developer Masterclass, link down below. <clears throat> it just attaches there like that and I also have the Moft iPad stand that I sometimes take with me and so this would go to the back compartment and I actually just realized I think this can also go inside of here yeah because it has this additional compartment so this one actually goes inside of right there would you look at that and then we can finally close this and put this inside of the backpack that is most of my programming gear done. Now moving on to my video gear. Basically my main camera is the one that you're watching right now is the Sony a7 IV. It's kind of heavy and the lens I have on is kind of heavy too. So depending on how much I think I'm gonna film during my trip, I might not take that. I might just take this other camera that I have, like a B camera is the Sony Z1F, something like that. Uh, basically I bought this 
to be essentially my vlog camera or my second channel where I'm going to be filming some vlogs and things like that. Especially here in Dubai, they don't usually like having these massive cameras around public. So yeah, I'll usually take one of these cameras with me. This one would go right there. If I was to take my big one, that one would go in the big compartment like that. In terms of my mic, I use this one. It is the Rode Video Mic NTG and I have this little stand thing with it that I kind of like the look of on my desk. I've also bought like a sturdier microphone, which is somewhere over there. And yeah, these would simply go inside somewhere in here. I'm not gonna do it because you need to hear me. Lastly, if I do take the big camera, I would also take this one with like a tr another travel like tripod thing. My camera would go on top of this. You've seen actually some videos on my channel that have been filmed using this setup. So I've had this. This one would go to the main compartment. Other than that, some memory cards and things like this, uh, which I would simply put in the small compartment right there. Then moving on into some smaller accessories. Of course, we need a wallet. This is a Chelsea wallet because back when I was a degenerate and I used to follow football, uh, Chelsea was my team, still is kind of, I don't really follow it anymore. Yeah, just, just a wallet, not much to say about that. It would usually just be in my pocket or I would put it in here and use this thing, which is the Apple wallet thing, which like attached to the back of your phone. Usually when I'm out and about, I will put my building key card in here or depending on what I'm doing, I might use this to hold my apartment key and stuff, as well as my Emirates ID, which is basically this ID card that you need here in Dubai. Uh, this fits two to three cards. If I put three cards in here, they tend to get a bit stuck. I had this awkward situation in a bank where they were asking for my Emirates ID, but I couldn't get it out of here because it was stuck because it doesn't really fit three things that well. Um, but anyway, that is what I would do there. Next, we have AirPods. Again, more Apple stuff, I know, original, right? Um, but yeah, not much to say about that. Last but not least, we have uh, the, <laughs> the Apple cloth. Okay, maybe maybe I'm an Apple fanboy. Okay, I admit it. Oh, God damn it. This is probably the most useless thing I've ever bought. Well, it's useful. I take it with me. I use it. It's great. But for a cloth, I don't remember how much it costs, but it's like, yeah, it's, it's an overpriced cloth. It's just a cloth right, with an Apple logo. Yeah, that's God damn it. You need to clean your laptop and your phone. Don't let them get dirty with your filthy fingers. So buy a cloth. Maybe don't buy the Apple cloth. Anyway, but that is pretty much what I need as an independent software engineer, traveling, working remotely, all that kind of fun stuff. I still need to keep reminding myself of how amazing it is that I've now built myself this lifestyle where I can do exactly what I ever wanted because I can just keep working, keep getting everything done wherever I am in the world, which is just it's just mind boggling to me. So if something like this resonates with you, then all that stands between you and a lifestyle like this is having the right skills. But unfortunately, most people get stuck in the wrong roadmaps. So if you wanna learn to code with an actual roadmap that's literally proven to work, you need to watch this video right here where I show you my dev framework that I have developed that can literally take anyone, even you, from zero to learn the code and achieving this remote work lifestyle. So I recommend you watch this video next. So I hope to see you there.